Well, I'm here with John Medved, one of Israel's leading venture capitalists and serial entrepreneurs. John, why is Israel so innovative? What, and, and how significant is, it, is Israel as a center of technical innovation? So it, Israel has become essentially the world's second center of innovation after Silicon Valley. Today, there are about 6,000 startups active in Israel. Each year, 600 of them get new venture capital funding. We're selling about 50 to 100 each year to American, mostly American, multinational companies. So now there are actually 300 international R&D centers in Israel for the likes of Microsoft, Cisco, Google, Facebook. Everybody is now accessing Israeli innovation. And many of the uh, products which we love, which we think are American, actually have their roots in Israel, whether it's a little jump drive or it's uh, instant messaging or it's the new Cisco router or it's a cool uh, operating system for the Kindle, all this stuff was actually built in Israel. So today the whole Israeli ecosystem is really a driver of innovation worldwide. The reason that this has come about is because of the unique entrepreneurial culture in Israel. Um, it's about risk and attitudes towards risk. Basically, Israelis are risk takers and we've always lived with risk. We live with existential risk. There's a madman in Iran who would like to wipe us out. So we, we overcome that and we just start Do you use that de your definition of a Jewish holiday? <laughs> uh, you know, they, there's a joke, an old Jewish joke about what is a Jewish holiday. It's they tried to kill us, they didn't succeed, now let's eat. And that sort of uh, conveys a message about what it is to be to be Jewish and to, and to basically overcome adversity. In other words, there have been people from Pharaoh to Haman to the Cossacks who chased my grandparents to the Holocaust, and yet that hasn't stopped the Jewish people from going forward. But you made, you made a point uh, when we were talking earlier that, that on test scores, uh, Israeli students are no smart. Absolutely and, normal. Uh, I mean, absolutely normal. They're, and and they're, you guys are getting bent out of shape about students in East Asia beating you on the OECD. They're, they're beating test most, yeah, most everybody. Really <laughs> so, the, so, it, so you think the big difference. Uh, the, the secret source in Israel is essentially a cultural one, it's a mindset. Absolutely, and it's an attitude towards risk, which means take the risk, if you, if you build a company and you fail, good on you. Okay? In other words, one of the secrets of being a venture capitalist is your chances of success, if you have two candidates with two different companies, the companies themselves are equal, but one has actually tried to build a company before and failed, and the other has never tried, it's counterintuitive, but go with the guy who failed because your chances are better investing in the guy who failed than with the, the first time or has never had that experience. The other thing we have going for us is an attitude towards global entrepreneurship. Israelis from day one get on a plane and go somewhere else. They don't want to be the biggest in Israel. They don't want to be king of Tel Aviv. And I think that's something probably that Australia can learn from us because I've met a bunch of Australian entrepreneurs who are great guys, but their dreams begin and end in Australia. Because Australia is a big enough market, great place, I want to be the biggest in Australia. But in order to really win in this game, you've got to want to be the biggest in the world. And you've got to get on a plane, you've got to go to Silicon Valley, you've got to go to Asia, you've got to go to Europe, you've got to compete with the best the world has to offer and, and uh, dominate. So your recipe for Australia to be more successful at innovation, uh, be more, think more globally. Think more globally, take more risk. Take don't, more risk. Don't be afraid of failure. If you're yeah. an investor, invest in the guy who's failed because your chances of making more money there are better than with the first timers. And ultimately, provide more capital. This country has huge resources. I mean, your superannuation and funds. Just, just compare the amount of capital invested in VC in Israel versus Australia. Well, right now, about 60 times on a per capita basis is what we're investing in startup companies. Uh, total money under management in Australia at the moment in venture capital is about $1.8 billion. We invest each and every year over $2 billion. So the actual money uh, that's under management, only 5 or 10% is actually invested on an annual basis. Wow. So about 20 times uh, the numbers that are actually being invested here are what we're investing in Israel. And when you adjust that for population, since we're one third your size, it's about 60 times. Okay. So that, that, there's actually good news here. There's a silver lining, which is that the situation of Australia today reminds me a lot of where Israel was 15 and 20 years ago. We've had a tremendous run. It was a wonderful thing to get involved in the early days of the Israeli tech business. And if you can now get involved in Australia, which I fully intend to do, I've been my first investment here, and we're now you know, looking for more in, in a big way, 
I think for the next 10 or 20 years are going to be great and it's all up and to the right. Great. Thanks, John. My pleasure.